Hey everyone, it's Kara here from Boho Berry and I am back with a brand new video for you today. This one is all about how I'm using my Hobonichi cousin as a business planner. So before anyone freaks out, I am still bullet journaling. I'm bullet journaling in my Leuchtturm, in my traveler's notebook, just like I have been for the last few months. But I decided that I needed a place to kind of get a little more into detail and depth with planning for my business. So I thought that the Hobonichi Cousin would be a great way to do that. And I'm excited to show you how I've set it up. All right, so we're gonna open her up. And the first thing that you'll notice is that I actually don't put my cover inside both sides of the cover, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, I don't know why, I just don't like it opening the book when I open the cover. I wanna see my cousin inside there and then be able to flip open from there. I don't know if that makes me weird or not, but I just have it tucked into the back part of the cover. Uh, inside the cover of my Hobonichi, I actually have some Hobonichi stencils that I purchased when I bought the planner, and then I have some little stickers, a little paper clip, and then in here I have that little Hobonichi life book that came with the planner. I just really think it's so, so cute. Even though I cannot necessarily read it, I just think it's adorable, and I don't know, I might cut these out and use them in my planner somewhere at some point. All right. So getting into the planner itself and how I'm using it. Um, on the very first page, we have our year at a glance calendars. So for 2018, I just wrote the month up above on top of each month. So it was easier for me to see which was which. After that, we have these, I call them tracker pages. I don't know what else to call them. I see a lot of people using them as trackers. And I decided to do kind of a hybrid of a tracker and an index here. So I wrote January at the top and I divided the month in half. So then I have a tracker on the right hand side for whenever I post, post to the blog, post on YouTube, Instagram, clear out my email inbox, send a newsletter to the tribe, or do a live video broadcast. And then the left hand side of each month I'm using as a sort of index. So in this month, I decided to do it with symbols. I was actually using this stencil here for the different symbols. I thought they were really cute. In hindsight, I'm not really a huge fan of the symbols. So going forward, I might just color code them. But for example, on January 1st, I have a box and a heart. So I know that I have some notes about the boho berry box and then some stats. So if I flip to January 1st, you can see that I have some notes about the boho berry box or something I was planning for the box, and then some stats for January and December, along with some other notes there. So in essence, these daily pages, whatever date is on them is functioning as a page number here for me to index whatever's going on on that page. So the star is for the 52 week challenge that's being hosted by Lisa Jacobs. So I can flip to January 6th and see that I have her challenge prompt there. Now, that being said, I'm not just using these pages willy nilly. I am still planning things day by day. So this is all stuff that I did on January 1st. January 2nd, I had a sick day, so I didn't write anything there. Uh, January 3rd, I did a lot of email, like admin type stuff, so I had some notes from there, some video ideas that I was jotting down. On January 4th, I was planning out my fountain pen video, and that's when I started to realize I needed to turn it into a series. So on January 5th, I started brainstorming different categories for that fountain pen series made some notes about why things didn't get done because I lost my voice last week. Uh, did a little bit of brainstorming for some topics for the Boho Berry Challenge coming up. S took some notes from a call. So these are all things that happen on each specific day. And since I'm keeping this almost exclusively business related, I was kind of struggling with what to do with my weekend 
pages. So my Saturday and Sunday, it just felt like a waste to leave those completely blank each week. So I decided that on Sunday I'd do my week in review and I'd write that and take up the whole page each Sunday. And then on Saturdays, I'm filling up the page with my response to Lisa Jacobs' 52-week challenge. And if you're curious about this challenge, it's a challenge for business owners. Uh, so if you're a business owner and you're curious about it, you can check her out at marketyourcreativity.com. And she just started this 52-week challenge this week. So that is how I'm handling my daily pages. And then the next thing I wanna show you is my weekly, my weekly spreads. So this was my first weekly spread from the first week of January, and I made a lot of mistakes and I experimented a lot. So when I saw the time listed out on each day, I thought, of course, like I'll bring back my time bar that I normally use in my bullet journal and kind of color code my day according to how I want it to go. So I did that just fine. So I have yellow is my morning routine, pink is work, green is appointments or events, and purple is personal, and blue is sleep. So my idea here is I would just highlight that very first column with whatever color. So this is my morning routine, and then within that time block I can write in whatever needs to happen during that time. Same with my business hours and then here you can see I had an appointment I had a phone call so I blocked that off with a little block of green and things that were appointments or events like things that had to happen at a specific time of day I kind of blocked in with these brackets everything else were just kind of to do items that could happen at any time during that entire work block for example and I did the weather up at the top just like I had been doing in on my weekly spreads in my bullet journal. I don't know if that's something I'll keep up because it's not really relevant to business, whether I have the weather on there or not. Uh, another thing that I realized is that, you know, having my morning routine on there is not really necessary for my business as well. So in the future, I may be changing up how I use this weekly spread to kind of maximize the space that I have. So this year, even though this is my business planner. I ended up incorporating a lot of personal stuff, uh, like my Power Zone Fitness Challenge that I'm participating in, uh, my Miracle Morning Routine every day, and then my meals every single day, my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So not really sure if that's something I wanna keep doing and keep incorporating. Um, on this current week that we're on, I decided to keep the personal stuff but make it a little more minimalist so to speak. Oh, I forgot to mention on week one, I was actually going over and writing, you can see the difference here. I was rewriting the hours of the day because this uses a 24 hour format and I'm on an AM PM format. So I rewrote, you know, five to 12, one to 12 to four in the morning. However, when I started doing that for my other days, like on this day, I accidentally kept going from 12 to 13, 14, 15, which kind of defeated the purpose. And I think I did that one more time. Yeah, right here, 12, 13, 14, 15, realized what I was doing and went back to like 4 p.m., 5 p.m. So I just decided to avoid that hassle. We're a military family. I understand military like 24 hour time just fine. Um, so I'm just gonna leave the 24 hour format from now on. So it's just way too easy for me to mess up writing over it. Uh, so in this week, the main way that I changed things up was instead of highlighting down the side as the time bar, I'm actually kind of, I'm actually outlining blocks of time. So here I'm waking up, I'm trying to wake up at 6 a.m. every day. So I still have sleep right there at the top. I have my morning routine until 8.30 and then at 8.30 is when my work day starts, and I'm kind of setting this up as I go every day. So filming this, today is Monday, so tonight when I go to plan for tomorrow, I'll actually kind of plan out my blocks for the day and how I want those to fall. Now I am still tracking my morning routines, my health and fitness stuff here on the left, and then my meals on the bottom. I don't know if that's something I'll keep, or I might actually switch things up and use this bottom section for just notes about the day or something like that, I'm not sure. But you can see also that I have some travel coming up. I'm going to Vegas this weekend with a friend, so I have those noted in here as well. 
And that is actually all I have filled out so far, but I know a lot of people have been really curious about how I'm using the Hobonichi and how I'm liking it as far as business planning goes. I do really, really love this weekly spread and being able to see everything at a glance. And then I also really, I didn't think I would, but I'm enjoying having an entire page each day to take notes and plan out projects and whatever I need to do for whatever I'm working on in my business that day. So it's actually been a surprising, a surprising thing for me. I didn't think I'd enjoy the daily pages. I didn't think I would have enough to fill them up every day. Uh, but so far, it's been really, really helpful to have a place to kind of spread out outside of my bullet journal and really get down to like planning and making task lists for all of my projects and things like that. So that is it, y'all. That is how I'm using my Hobonichi for now for business planning. I'm loving it so far. Um, I do wanna mention that for the most part, all of the uh, black writing that you see in here, I'm doing with my Tombow Mono drawing pen in 03. And I'm still using my Tombow dual brush pens for color, albeit very minimally. And then on my on my daily pages, I am pretty much just writing with my Tombow Mono drawing pen. Like all of this writing in black is all of that pen. I just have this one little bit on my weekly review where I wrote with my Twisby. This is my Twisby Eco. It is inked up with Pilot Eroshizuku Kujaku, which is my favorite, favorite turquoise ink. But yeah, I'm keeping it really simple. I'm not doing stickers. I'm not adding anything super artsy in. I mean, I'm keeping it cute so that I'm excited to come back to it. But overall, my goal is not to make this artistic or pretty necessarily. It's just very functional, like day-to-day -day planning. All right, y'all, that is gonna do it for today. If you have any questions, as always, drop them in the comments below. I do wanna say like this is all still a giant experiment to me, uh, one that I am loving so far, but I fully expect, and you should expect too, <laughs> things uh, might change in here from time to time, and I'll be sure to give you updates on how I'm using my Hobonichi cousin as a business planner. All right, y'all, have a great rest of your week. Bye.